Hello guys, uh, um, this is the second part of the video I was doing about the uh, Swampos patch and today we are gonna just uh, glue the uh, main crack um, and for this restoration, for this uh, gluing back we need these tools this uh, um, clamp that is used for corners cracks but also it's very good for if you have a Crack that is fresh like this, like this one. Uh, normally, in theory, you shouldn't have any big issues. When you hold tight this this crack in the edge, it will tie very hard all the way in. But because it's not a perfect science, not something that you can assure 100%, we're gonna use also this kind of tools. This is our top plate clap, uh, clamps or could be also a bottom plate uh, cap. You see? You hold the two edges and you just move the screw, move the, um, this thing in the screw, then you go tie or loose. Then I use two of them, one small one for the corner area and one big one for the uh, big area here in the in the uh, bottom uh, belly okay now we also want to use a trick piece in order to push down in case something uh, like it, an imperfection happened during the um, pressing with the clamps in this way then this um, acrylic will prevent the edges of the crack here to pop up normally when you wet uh, wood they would uh, create a rebarb on the edges so the idea with this acrylic is to put it in the top so when the glue the wood uh, um, suck the humidity and um, swallow swallow the humidity and, and um, start to make it <clears throat> start to be big, big in the edges then uh, uh, this thing is gonna prevent the edges, mostly the top, which is a, is a part that's gonna be uh, beautiful to pop up and uh, don't look as good. And also, it's, it will help a lot because if we get this crack to get extremely flat and even uh, after this glue, then of course the mold with the plaster is gonna be perfect and it's gonna be easier to retouch in case we need it. In this case, we may don't need it, but we don't know still this small line that you can see in here Okay, you can see but I will, I will add some pictures to the video Okay, that's the whole idea with this um, What I have here, I have a glue already prepared I like this uh, very rustic and all metal how do you know if the glue is good? When you move the glue, this, this is uh, hot, and this is also hot. This fresh glue just I, I just made. You should do this and you should have a long line, like this one. You see, first line, then drops. If you have a line, that means that the, or if you have only drops, the glue is too thick or too liquid. In this case, it's perfect because I can have a line of continued glue coming down because it's thick enough. Look. You see? Lord. This is perfect. Now, the first thing you have to do in order to glue this is wet a little bit the edges of the crack. So uh, the, the glue is going to serve uh, the glue you're going to put in over it. Now, there is a way to do that. I'm going to use this clamp as a, a help. It's going to be simple. I'm just going to press. I'm going to uh, close in a little bit. Why? Because I'm going to cross these clamps in here. I'm going to press the top. You have cork 
in these small clamps here so you don't damage the top, okay? In case you buy one of these tools, so you have the cord, please put the cords because otherwise you're gonna damage the, the, the top. Now, this is the whole idea. I put the clamp in here. I start with what I need it. Okay. I cross my screws. I press the top gentle, but in a way that it's not gonna move. You see? And then. I use this screw here to open up a little bit. Why is opening up? Because you have a, um, I don't remember the name of this, I'm gonna put it in the description. Uh, the thing is in the, in the, in the inside, so it's, it push both sides to open up, okay? Now, not too much, you have to be gentle because you don't want to open up the cracker even more. Now you clean your brush and you pour some clean water. In this case, I'm gonna put some paper underneath so I, my blanket doesn't get wet and I'll have to um, wash later or, or use another one. I start to put in a little bit of water, not too much, so the glue doesn't deform, but enough so I make wet and warm the area. Some people, one more time, they use heat to do this. I don't love the heat. I had bad feelings with the heat when I was learning in the beginning. I use uh, one time I used too much um, uh, heat gun in the inside, thinking I was warming up the wood so the glue uh, was, a big, was about to be absorbed better. And what happened is the heat damaged the binding on the other side. It was a very dumb uh, mistake, but those are the mistakes you make when you're learning. And because of that, I'm not making this mistake anymore. Now, just a little bit on the other side, just a little bit, so you are sure. Both sides of the cracks are wet enough, and then you dry. Very gentle because you don't want to damage the edge of the varnish in this area. Now dry, go on the other side too. Now, next steps. On the glue. You can see because the crack is a little bit open because of this clamp, the, the glue is getting in, is sucking into the into the crack, which is good. This is what we want. We should not apply too much glue that's gonna be a mess later. Because also we need this area clean in order to pull the clicks. If we have too much glue, then it's gonna be the formula. We're gonna need to use our uh, scraper and clean the area, and we don't want that. We want as clean as possible. So when we uh, are gonna use, uh, gonna start the clicks. So we reinforce the crack up to the uh, some push er some post patch area where we're gonna put a, a, a new piece of it. Then what we're having is it's not gonna be good enough for the clicks. It's not gonna be flat enough, you see? That's the reason I'm cleaning it up. Then, check on the other side. And as you can see, the barb, the edge of the two sides of the crack already started popping up a little bit. Let's see if you can see this. I think you can see a little bit in there. Anyway, I'm gonna take pictures. And what happened now? This is the time when I need to be sure the two sides of these screws are in the same height. And this is very tricky because it's not easy. Wood behaves in a very weird way sometimes, and you have to be sure. Good thing this uh, tool has two screws one in the top and one in the bottom, so you can regulate a little bit the high you want. In this case, it's too much now. Okay, this is really good. And now, next step. It's closing up this and you see when you close up how the glue is gonna start coming out you see how you can see this which is good this is pretty good I think it's official really quick so I can Add the picture to the video. 
And you can see how the blue went outside when you press in no way. Which is really, really beautiful. Okay, now one more time on the clean. Both sides. I don't want any sets, a set of uh, glue. Also remember the glue tends also to glue to the uh, varnish. And then when you try to remove later, you could have some issues because you can remove also some varnish and you don't want that. Now, this is extremely fresh and now I have to hurry because I need to be sure that the edges of the cracks are level. How I do this? First, with my nail, that's the reason why I, I sometimes leave my pinky nail long, I just make sure that both sides are the same height. In this case, I can see that the left side is higher. Then, very gentle, I try to adjust this from the side. Pushing down the left and pushing up the right. Of course, with these tools, I'm gonna uh, readjust even more this uh, imperfection. Now you can see how the edges of the cracks are uh, up, which is normal, but it's also dangerous if you don't know how to deal with this. I'm gonna test one more time. Seal up. Now it's higher the right, the right side. Better. Okay. Okay. Now it's the turn to use this clamp. Now I can go the way this way. I can go the way this way. I am still stopping a little bit here. Let me try to make it better. It's very tricky exercise. I don't want to stick your fingers. Okay. Okay, no. The first one, the first one is gonna be the long one. Because it's the longest uh, area where we need to reinforce how tight stuff. Now something is gonna happen. When you use this kind of tools, the top or the bottom tends to bend down or bend up. That's dangerous. That's the reason you have to be careful of the amount of pressure you put in the screw here. Because you don't want the top to bend the corners and, and breaks or deform the arch of the top. Just enough. Okay. Now do the one. And the same process in here. We need to be gentle so we don't make more damage to their instrument that we have. Okay, I think this is enough pressure but not enough to damage the instrument. Okay, now is the time to use the acrylic. What we do with the acrylic? This acrylic force, you have to be sure that you have, you have to smooth down the edge of the acrylic so you don't damage the body with the acrylic, okay? You push the acrylic into the top of the crack. Okay. Like this, so the Edge, all the edge of the crack, what we call the bar or the rib bar, so depending on uh, where you're from and uh, your language, uh, will be pushed down. <coughs> Some people 
even uh, wet a little bit the area before they do that. I would do this in this case because the edges come up too much for my desk. Just a little bit. So we um, made the wood a little bit more malleable than it should be in normal uh, times. One more time. Bring this up. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. Remember, this is just a little bit warm. The water is going to be um, dry up and the uh, warm zone. Okay. okay, this is good. And this is what we want. Exactly what we want. Okay, since the two tools have different arch, I need to, to make a, a, a shim to push down in here. See? This acrylic, so the pressure is even both sides. Pretty as good. But anyway, I will do something uh, to prevent any calf wound. And we use for this two sticks. Okay, in theory, this should be a great the bottle so I don't damage the, uh, the bottom of the, uh, the work. Okay, so one more way. Uh, yes, way. Okay, this is a new one. I need to find this tool. Give me one second, I'm gonna pause the video. I didn't found my uh, used clamps. I don't know why. I don't. I don't think was uh, was I, I would need it. That's the reason I didn't bring it to the table today. But because I don't want the glue to get dry before uh, everything is done. I don't want the the job to deform. I would just want to improvise. And we use another acrylic with that. Rubber band, rubber, not rubber band, rubber in the bottom. So I can uh, so I do this before it the front. That's the whole idea. I don't want the the, the jack to be front. Show you the end results. You have to improvise. Sometimes you have to improvise. You have no option because you know, for all of yours out there, it's almost impossible to have all the tools you need every time. Most of the time, we have to order tools for a specific jobs. In this case, I have the I have the clamp, 
But I don't find maybe I have to be a little more organized. But anyway. This is gonna be good enough because anyway, I don't need too much pressure. I just need enough pressure to make it perfect. The surface. But not enough to damage. And that's all. That's also looking really good. And this is a result of this part of the job. In theory, the glue should be ready in about two hours from now. But anyway, I like to leave them at least five to ten hours. I mean, uh, about tomorrow, I will be making the mold with the plaster. And oh, first, before the mold, the plaster, I need to start the cleats. There is two ways to start the cleats. Some people use just a plastic face like this with a, with a uh, blanket, so you don't damage the varnish. I, I really like this, you know, it's more like manual, you can adapt yourself and your hands to the surface and to the shape of the top. Or some people just go directly, make the mold with the plaster, and then over the mold, they do the, the, the cleats. It's about the, um, a preference. How do you like to make the cleats? The cleats are a very simple job. You use uh, paste hands, um, what do you call this? Sand, sand paper, very thin sand paper over the top of the of the cracks where the crack where the cleats. Uh, you want the cleats uh, located, then you just move the cleats all the way like this. And in the next video, I'm gonna explain how the cleats should be uh, the, um, selected and how the direction of the cleats should be in order to reinforce better the area. Okay, guys, uh, this is all for today. I'm gonna add some photos also to this video, so it's more like uh, infor informative, so it's not like a too technical, not too, too, too long. And um, if you like it, please subscribe, and uh, I really like the way you guys uh, received the first video. I will continue to do this kind of things, because I love it, and I think it's very good for people out there, so they see how difficult this job is, and they don't try to do by themselves. Remember, if you have something serious like a really scalp cracks, and if you have experience, you should never try to do it by yourself because you can damage more your instrument than the damage that the instrument already have, and it will be the worst case scenario. Okay, guys, thank you. Bye.